I tell you the truth when I say that Gauss's theorem is your best friend, especially in any kind of problem that involves computing flux out of a closed surface. Gauss's theorem is what you should go to. Let's see this in the context of an example, a rather intimidating looking example. Let's use Gauss's theorem to integrate beta, which is the two form given by x squared plus y minus e to the 2z times dx wedge dz plus 3 times quantity x plus sine of y squared z dy wedge dz. Now I have to integrate that two form over the surface that is given implicitly by the equation z squared equals 4 minus quantity 7 minus square root of x squared plus y squared squared. Oy, oy, oy. This looks bad, but we have to try. Now concerning that surface, I called it a torus. Why did I do that? I called it a torus because it's a torus. It is something that looks like a <clears throat> donut. And if you investigate this equation, you can see cylindrical coordinates kicking in. You can see that radius there, and you can see the 7 and the 4. And if you break down what that means, you get that you have a outer radius of this torus equal to 7. You have an inner radius equal to 2. Okay, so now let's investigate this two form beta. In order to use Gauss's theorem, we're going to have to differentiate this. So let's take the derivative. I have to take the derivative of the coefficient function out in front and then wedge it with what's left over. So d beta is given by what's that first coefficient function? I differentiate that, I get 2x dx plus dy minus 2e to the 2z dz, I wedge all of that with dx wedge dz. Then for the second term, I take the derivative of the coefficient function up front, yielding 3 times quantity dx plus 2yz sine y squared z dy plus y squared sine y squared z dz, all of that wedged with dy dz. Now, I'm looking at that and I'm seeing a whole lot of cancellation because a whole lot of dy wedge dy and dz wedge dz and dx wedge dx. In the end, what I get is dy wedge dx wedge dz plus 3 times dx wedge dy wedge dz. Rearranging the order in that first basis 3 form, I get 2 dx wedge dy wedge dz. That is twice the volume form. That means, by Gauss's theorem, we just have to compute twice the volume of this solid. Now recall that for an object of revolution about some axis, its volume can be computed as the product of the cross-sectional area with the distance that the centroid of that region travels. That's called Pappus's theorem, and that comes from single variable calculus. With that in mind, let us get a final answer by showing that the flux out of this boundary torus is twice the volume of the interior region. That is twice what? The cross-sectional disk has area pi times 2 squared. The centroid of that disk travels along a circle of radius 7. That path length is 2 times pi times 7. Multiply all that together, you get 112 pi squared for a final answer. That was... That was not so bad. Gauss's theorem is really your best friend for difficult sounding flux problems.